What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics. Up next, we are going to talk about the biggest controversy in the comic community right now, but I am going to focus on the recent response from CGC on how and why they graded that Ultimate Fallout 4 reprint from Black Flag with the acetate cover. So let's talk about it. So before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So most of us are probably aware now about everything that went on at C2E2 with the Ultimate Fallout 4 reprint with the estate cover from Black Flag. It has been, at least on Instagram, one of the biggest things that's been going on. And on YouTube, there have been a bunch of videos that have been put out about it. So. I'm not going to go into the whole controversy about everything that went on at the con. Plenty of other channels, plenty of other Instagram posts, all of that have covered it in detail. They've gone over all of that. If you want to see some great videos about it, make sure to go check out Swagglehaus's channel. He did a great video on it, as well as the live from Pressable Defects that was done. Uh, now, just be aware, that the Pressable Defects one, uh, their channel is much more adult content. It's not really safe for work, work content, so just be aware of that when, you, uh, when you're going into that, uh, into that channel. Now, part of the reason I'm not talking about that level of the controversy is I wasn't there. I'm generally not a con person, and I am not a modern collector, a modern variant collector, if you've watched my channel. So it's really outside of my wheelhouse, and it's not something I really want to get into. But once CGC released their statement about grading, if you also watch my channel, you know I talk about grading quite a bit. And so that's something that I felt like I could actually speak to, and I could maybe just at least add my perspective to it. Now, one thing I'm going to say... I am <laughs> I'm a little nervous about making this video just because I've, I've seen all the comments and all the other videos and there's a lot of anger and hate and people being upset right now. So if you put garbage comments into my section, I'm going to remove them. No, I don't need stuff attacking people, anything like that. I don't want to see it. Uh, so I'm just going to say that right now. I, I don't want to see that kind of stuff in the comment section. But I am happy to see comments about people that want to discuss why or why not they agree with what's been going on here with the grading. Now, I don't have any affiliation with CGC. I don't have any affiliation with Black Flag. I don't have any dog in this fight. This is just my perspective, my opinion on this subject. So if you haven't seen the response from CGC, they gave a quick response yesterday where it was basically just like, we know what we graded, we stand by it. And that didn't go over so well because it was basically kind of like, a, I think it came across as a, you know, shut up, we, we are doing what we're doing and you don't need to worry about it kind of response. And a lot of people didn't really respond to that very well. But today we got a much more detailed, in-depth response from CGC. So I'm going to read that. So I'm looking offside a little bit because I'm reading this. So this was the response. We apologize for the short response yesterday and wanted to follow up with an explanation of our thought process behind the grade assignments. We treated them as we would any other variant cover that's attached with an extra set of staples after the book was printed. And at the times, these books included an original cover as well. There's a precedent for acetate covers being attached to a printed book and then graded by CGC. An example is Stray Dogs number one from last year. An acetate variant cover was attached with an extra set of staples to which CGC assigned a universal grade and a notation of acetate cover on the label. The extra set of staples were part of the manufacturing process of attaching the acetate cover and not considered a defect. All right, so that is the response from CGC on how they graded it, why they graded it. Now I'll go into my response to that, my thought process on that, and then we'll talk about some of the, the complaints and comments that I've seen in response to that, uh, that statement from CGC. So personally to me, that explanation is completely fine. All I wanted from CGC was an explanation about how they graded the book and why. And honestly, once you have that justification, it doesn't matter. I don't own CGC, you don't own CGC, Marvel doesn't own CGC, they don't publish their standards, they are a private company that gets to do what they want with respect to grading collectibles. And this is a collectible that they decided to grade and they determined that 
regardless of if this was from a publisher or from a retailer that then added something after the fact, they were going to grade it as a universal acetate cover. And honestly, I already, I can, I can feel, I can feel the comments <laughs> being typed in that are angry and about why I'm wrong. But I think what people really need to realize with CGC is what they are. CGC is a grading service. That is what they do. They are wholly separate from Marvel because that's been one of the big comments that I've been seeing is that, oh, did CGC know that Marvel didn't approve of this? You know, that this was done after the fact, this was outside of, of Marvel and they don't have to ask Marvel for approval. They don't have to ask them what they can grade or how they can grade it. Now, I'm sure that they have deals with Marvel about using their logo and using the, the artwork that they have for those custom labels, that kind of thing. But Marvel doesn't own CGC and they don't have any say on if someone can grade that comic. That's why there are plenty of other third party graders outside of CGC and CBCS. They don't all go to Marvel to get approval to grade their comics. Same thing with like Pokemon cards, for example, with PSA, Beckett, SGC, CGC, they aren't all going to Pokemon to get approval to grade those cards. It's just a service that they provide. They assign a grade, encase it in plastic. They are separate from that company. They don't need approval to grade something like that. And that's why, for example, at least some card grading companies will grade these uh, custom cards that people make that are not affiliated with Pokemon in any way. There's nothing that says they can't. It's their company. They are allowed to decide what they want to grade. Now, also, CGC is not like it's some regulated grading standard. They, they can choose to grade whatever they want. They can choose to grade however they want. And they, that can change over time. They may change their minds on this situation. They may decide that, well, we just want to keep things smooth with Marvel, and so we won't grade this book anymore moving forward. Now, if they do that, uh, this was talked about some, I think, on like pressable defects that that would make this book super, super hot if it's graded in a universal blue label. So uh, if you have one of those, maybe hold on to it for a while to see what happens with it, because it could become one of those extremely rare, expensive variants uh, that is definitely a possibility for this book, because we don't know how they're necessarily going to handle this moving forward. But at least right now, with what we've heard from CGC, assuming they haven't put out another statement since I put it uh, since I put out this video, uh, that they are going to grade these acetate covers and they're going to give them universal blue labels and they're going to treat them as something from the manufacturer. Now, there are numerous examples of CGC doing their own thing with these types of books. Uh, for example, you've got the invisible comic from Bad Idea. It's It was an invisible comic. It wasn't a real comic. Yes, it was from a publisher. I get that. Uh, but that's what they did. Then you've got the Young Avengers number one comic that was graded a 9.5. It's the only 9.5 that's out there. They can do this kind of thing. They can choose how they want to grade a book. They can choose what books they want to grade, what they consider a valid book, all of that. It's up to them as a private company to decide that. If you disagree, that's fine, but it's their prerogative to grade what they want. They don't have to answer to any of these outside entities for the products that they are actually grading. Now, let's get into some of the comments that I've seen related to this, some of the, uh, the feedback questions, that kind of thing. Now, the first one I've touched on already that this was made by a retailer and not a publisher. And like I said earlier, CGC can grade whatever they want. They can interpret that retailer incentive even though they added something after the fact to a Marvel published book is something that they are willing to grade that they'll interpret as a blue label. They do notate on the cover uh, that or on the label that it's a black flag acetate variant. Uh, and so honestly, I don't see why that matters. Like why it doesn't matter to me if they grade this book as a universal blue label. It doesn't have any effect to me on their grading standards because they've told us how they're grading it and why they're grading it the way they are. If it was something that was hidden and you had to guess and under, to try to figure out what was going on with that, that might be another story, but they've been very clear about why they graded it the way they did. And honestly, like I said, I don't think it takes anything away from the company and their grading standards because of that. And no, I'm not just saying that because I have CGC books, it doesn't matter to me. Also got CBCS books up there, you know. It's just that, in my opinion, it is their company they can choose what to grade. 
and it doesn't make a difference if it is from Marvel or from a retailer that then added something to it. As long as they coordinated that with CGC and CGC is okay with it, so be it. All right, now the next one was that the Stray Dogs cover that they referenced had its own barcode and a different price. Again, you're gonna find my responses are relatively similar for, for a lot of these questions. The answer is, so what? Why does it matter? It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. CGC gets to interpret what they wanna grade and how they want to grade it. And so it doesn't matter if it's not officially from Marvel, it doesn't matter that it didn't have its own barcode on it. Now, they may decide to change their mind after the fact and decide that they aren't going to grade these moving forward, but at least for now, they've stated what they're doing and that is how they decided to grade this book. All right, now the next comment was, does that mean that I can add an acetate cover to my book and get a 10-0 for a Golden Age book or a Silver Age book, Bronze Age book, all that kind of thing? No. Uh, I would not recommend doing that. I will guarantee if you send that book into CGC uh, that they will interpret it as damage and possibly give it something like a green label. I don't know for sure how they would uh, interpret adding something on like that. I'm guessing they would likely just interpret it as damage and grade the book as is, grade the normal cover. But even if you were a retailer and it was allowed and you wanted to do that, it would still be labeled an acetate cover. And so, yeah, maybe you have some some CGC case that has, like say you were a publisher and you had a whole bunch of these books from 20 years ago and you decided to put those on there and make it a variant and then get these 10 O's and nine nines, that kind of thing. It may work, but you're still gonna get the acetate label. And so people are gonna know that it's not really a nine eight or a nine nine or a 10 O. So that, that's how I would interpret that. I would not recommend attaching these uh, additional covers to your books and trying to submit them to CGC. I don't think it's gonna go the way you want it to, and then it's just gonna be something that you're additionally upset about because about, you now damaged your book further. All right, next one. You can't trust CGC's grading because of this. Again, why? <laughs> they have clearly stated their thought process for this. It doesn't impact how they are grading their books. From my perspective as a consumer, all I need to know is how they went about grading that book. That's how I end up then determining how I grade my books when I'm going to be submitting them into CGC. And so it just, it doesn't have any impact on the quality control of CGC. Now you could have plenty of other things you can complain about with quality control and all of that, but this to me is not one of them. Now, next question I've seen is, what would CBCS or PGX do? And then, yeah, it, it honestly doesn't matter. They're not the same companies. We already know that PGX does not grade the same way that CBCS and CGC do. We know that CBCS does not grade the same way that CGC does. They have their own grading standards. They are their own companies, and they get to determine how they want to grade books and what books they want to grade. And so, yeah, you could maybe try to send this book, if you get one, into CBCS and see what happens. They may give it a blue label, they may not. I can't say, I have no idea. I'm guessing somebody's probably gonna try though, so it'll be interesting to see how they do it. But again, it's up to CGC, it's up to CBCS, how they want to grade their books. Now, the last comment here that I, I saw was, CGC got paid to do this. Of course they did, <laughs> that's what they do. I guarantee they got paid to grade that book. You know, they, they are a collectible grading company. People pay them money and they grade their collectibles. Now you may disagree with how they graded it. You may think it should be a double cover and they give two a grade for the acetate and a grade for the interior. It should be a qualified grade or it should be something else. But I don't own that company. I don't own CGC. You don't own CGC. They get to decide how they want to process these books. And they decided that this is a collectible that they want to grade. Maybe they're reading the tea leaves and they're seeing that these acetate covers are something that are going to get more and more popular and that they want to have that as something that they can grade moving forward because it's going to be another income stream for grading comics. And, I mean, that's totally a possibility. And so I don't know if that's the case, but that is the decision that they decided to make as a private company to grade these books. All right, so that was the CGC response to the grading of this acetate cover. I think it's actually pretty great that they even provided a response. Uh, that doesn't always happen. I mean, if we look at the uh, the label notes kind of fiasco thing that happened a couple months ago, they never really gave a response to that one and now it's largely just blown over and nobody talks about it anymore. I expect that something very similar is going to happen with these acetate covers. I expect that it's going to blow over and people are probably going to be talking about something else a month from now, if not shorter than that. But 
my personal feeling on this is that it's just good that they gave a response. It helps us know how they're going to interpret those books moving forward. For me personally, it doesn't really matter. I am not really going to be buying S state cover books, modern variants, the con variants, that kind of thing. But I still think it's important for people to talk about and understand. It's good to know how these books are graded and what those standards are when they're being graded. But if you have any comments on this, remember, keep them polite, keep them cordial, and uh, I will I'll check them, I'll respond, all that kind of stuff. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.